Are you serious? Are you serious? Whoa, Comet Ison has survived. Oh, NASA said it died. Yes, and Carl Battens, Carl Battens, the expert that everybody runs to for his great, awesome opinion on scientific discoveries and comets and things going on in the cosmos. Well, he was so giddy yesterday, quickly to make the confirmation to be first that Comet Ison had died, and it had went up and poof into a little dust, gone. Well, the problem with that, Carl, is that's what the entire scientific community is wanting, NASA included. They're hoping against hope. They don't want the biblical signs in the Bible to be fulfilled. They're hoping against hope. What they have to understand is they're dealing with the Creator. Don't tell the Creator what He can and can't do. They were sure this comet would not survive the sun, that it could never get that close to the surface and come out the other side. Well, folks, it has. It has survived. Yes, it took a, it took a licking, but it keeps on ticking. I mean, it's still going. And it has taken a different shape because some of it peeled away, creating a larger debris field behind it than what was initially. So part of this rock of steel, and that's really what it's got to be, almost like a diamond. I mean, is it the pearl of great price in the Bible? I mean, when you look at the big picture, God is certainly sending us signs. Now, for sure, the biblical ramifications are there. If you grab your Bible, I want you to go with me to Revelation 8.8, because I'm now going to take you to January. Now, December, I want you to enjoy the show. You're going to get to see Comet Ison in the sky. You're going to be able to see it through telescopes. It will be fantastic and fabulous. It will be the star, just like the days of the star of Bethlehem, the comet that raced through the sky, telling the world from the east that a Savior had been born. Now, this 2,000 years later, on the end of, first of all, it arrived at the sun on Thanksgiving and Hanukkah, which that hasn't happened. Thanksgiving and Hanukkah have not been the same day since 1888, and it won't ever be again for 79,043 years. What? Is there something biblical going on here? So on Hanukkah and Thanksgiving, Comet Ison dies very close to the sun, and all the world condemns it and says it's dead. It will not come out. It has died. It is dead. Just like they said about Jesus when he died on the cross and they put him in Joseph Arimathea's new tomb. They said, He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He won't come out. But on the third day, he arose. He didn't look the same as he went in, but he was more brilliant, more brighter, and more powerful. And this comet is giving us the exact same scenario. Now the Bible says there would be signs in the heavens. There shall be for there, there'll be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and the stress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. And we've had 27 earthquakes in the last 24 hours during this situation developing of Ison. We've also had 35 different volcanoes that are either spewing ash or puffing smoke or blowing off some lava. We've also got China and America right now dueling over land. China has said it's going to take some islands from Japan and South Korea and has declared it theirs, but America flew two B-52 bombers right over that airspace and said, oh no you don't. Well now China has sent jet planes in behind America t trailing us. You know, one of the, I was given 12 prophecies on New Year's Eve for the year of 2013. And one of those prophecies was there'd be great solar flares on the sun. Well, we know that's true. But uh, we also, one of them was there would be unrest in Asia. And that was happening the same time that Ison was racing through the air. Now, let me give you some comments. I just saw where BB, uh, the BBC tried to say, hey, maybe Comet Ison might make it. Wait a minute, maybe, wait, wait a minute. Maybe it is, there's something come out of there. We don't know what that is yet. Well, here's what they were saying last night. Carl Battens declared it dead. Listen to this. Uh, uh, scientists had hoped that the comet from the furthest reaches of the solar system would be able to slingshot around the sun on Thursday and emerge streaming a tail visible to the naked eye next month. 
But after NASA telescopes tracked the comet plunging into the sun's corona, no evidence of it emerged on the other side. Scientists said they would continue to analyze the imagery from the telescopes for signs of the comet or debris from it breaking up. Quote, at this point, I do suspect that the comet has broken up and died, says Carl Battens. And this is the guy that always goes out first. It has died and broken up. It has died. A comet scientist for the Naval Research Laboratory who joined NASA and Google chat during that live broadcast. Let's at least give it a couple more hours, he said, before we start writing the obituary. Are you serious, Carl? Carl! <laughs> All right, let me just do this. Uh, let me just say, I get a little happy when God's word is confirmed. And once again, the false prophets of NASA have been proven to be liars. Why are they trying to hide? What else are they trying to hide? Wayne of Canada sent me an email saying, what else are they trying to hide? Well, that's still a question. I think the answer is coming in the next few weeks. I think it's the debris trail following it that could be significantly full of meteorites and asteroids and tons of comet dust. This fan of this tail is widening, as Jesse at BP Earthwatch has been saying. Matter of fact, I'm going to also play a little bit about Ison is now starting to regain its tail. Uh, Jesse just did a video about 15 minutes ago. Here's some of his words. November 29th. I was looking at stereo ahead. Check this out. That solar flare follows eye sign out. Now, a lot of our cameras and instruments just aren't working very well the last few days. They had a real good way of going down and turning the cameras at the wrong way at the right time. But look at this fan tail coming out on B. And then the last go, check this out. We didn't get to watch it live. They said their servers went down. They're still down. Check that out. And they're saying that's just dust particles blowing around it. BS as usual. The Comet Ison Crack Group, you should be ashamed of yourself. You, really you are the shields. I don't care what anybody says. You are the shields. Now, Jesse says BS. Of course, he means bologna sandwich. Okay. <laughs> Let me, let's just go, let's look at the spiritual significance of this as well. As Jesse's done a tremendous job. If you want to know what's going on, Go to BP Earthwatch on YouTube. Go to his channel, and you'll get fully informed of what's taking place. Now, why am I fascinated by the signs in the heavens? And Because it's one of, I, look, I study it all. Earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, the sea and the waves roaring, cyclones, uh, typhoons, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, all of these natural things, as well as pestilence like locusts and diseases that seem to spread certain viruses like the bird flu. All of these are biblical signs that Jesus told us would take place before his coming. But he specifically told you that when you begin to see the signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and the stress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring, he said, you need to look up, lift up your heads for your redemption's drawing nigh. He specifically gave you this ultimate sign. Now, there's some other things that are going to happen. Uh, and as the Bible talks about, there's seven seals in the book of Revelation. I truly believe that the first five seals have all broken. And that we're waiting on the sixth seal to break, which is a major earthquake that has to come and really, really affect the earth. And that hasn't happened yet. Uh, but it could happen any moment. But I want to look at the seventh seal. In other words, the sixth and seventh seal could break very quickly almost within a day of each other, or within hours of each other. Um, uh, and and uh, actually, part of it could cause each one to happen. But I want to go to the seventh seal then, okay? Now, if you go to Revelation chapter 8, verse 8, understand something. When Comet Ison goes over top of us, it'll be beautiful. It will be a sign in the heavens. It'll be glorious. But then we got to pass through that debris field. That tail on that... Debris field is huge. And Jesse at BP Earthwatch is analyzing it, realizing it's even bigger than he thought. And part of it is because after Comet Ison survived the perihelium helium around the sun, it tore away some of the head on that comet and it fell, it cracked it off back into the debris field. 
And so the debris field is much longer and wider, and Lord knows what all is in it. And maybe that's why NASA keeps turning off their telescopes and hiding information and trying to make us think it died. There's too many of us down here that know the truth. Here's what the Bible said in Revelation 8.8. 8, and the second angel sounded as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And a third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten. And a third part of the moon and a third part of the stars, so that as the third part of them were darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the mist of heaven, saying un with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. So folks, what I'm saying is, we don't know what we're going to be going through in the debris trail during January. But we know Ison has survived, and that means the debris trail is following it, and it's quite long, and it's fanning out, so it's quite wide. We don't know what all's in it yet, and you can't trust NASA. They told you the comet died. Obviously, it didn't. So you don't know, they'll tell you there's nothing really in it, don't worry, there's not many rocks. You don't know. We don't know what's in it. We don't know yet. But we will continue to analyze it. But we do know that we got to pass through this debris trail. And it's got to have a lot of stuff in it. Now it may not affect us much at all. And then again, you may have a Revelation chapter 8 moment. Which means the 6th and 7th seals could break. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means you better be ready because if you're a child of God, you're getting ready to leave here. And if you're not, you're in trouble. And this is my job is just to point out the signs of what's going on around the world. Look, we got a peace agreement. I personally don't think we're going to have a Revelation 8 moment. I'm just telling you. I don't believe that this ISIN will cause Revelation 8.8. 8. I don't. I don't know, but I don't. But I do think we are in for some activity some meteor showers, some, some asteroids or meteorites could certainly come across our atmosphere. We could have as many as 50, 60. Who knows? It could create some damage on the earth. It's happened before. I do think God's going to get our attention in a big way. So I think you need to stay tuned as we go into the seven days of passage, which could actually be more than seven days now because the tail is widening. So you need to be ready. Now here's the thing is about that. You know what you really need to do? You get saved. I don't have any fear, do you? If you're saved, you don't. But many people are not saved. Now, what's amazing about this, the timing of this comet, the size of this comet, the, the size of the debris trail, the fact we got to pass through it, and the peace agreement this is going, will be going into its fifth and sixth month as this comet, as we're passing through the debris trail. So the covenant with many, which is in Daniel 9.27, will be very, very intensely in negotiations. And there is going to be a lot of eye-poking and finger-pointing finger and name-calling going on between the world leaders. Matter of fact, look for some fireworks next week when John Kerry meets with Benjamin Netanyahu in Jerusalem. So stay with us here at this channel. Keep it. Go to my website. Go read the, the, the 12 prophecies the Lord gave me for this year. It's amazing how these have come to pass. It's amazing. So I want you to watch my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. Also, you want to get my next book. You got Mark of the Beast, then you definitely want Jerusalem Jihad, which is a sequel to Mark of the Beast. It will definitely share with you the current world events and the apocalyptic hour that we're living in. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. Let's give our lives to Jesus Christ. We still got some time.